Welcome back to part five of Civitai.com's Beginner's Guide to AI Art. In this part of the series, we are going to be discussing the principles of prompting, and we are joined by Civitai community member, AI art veteran, Pookie Numnums. Pookie is going to explain the underlying values and principles behind prompting so that you can understand exactly what the prompt is doing and how to properly construct it. This is not going to be a click-by-click follow us to ABC type of tutorial. Instead, we would rather you focus on the principles that way, no matter what AI art software you are working in or what type of image you would like to generate, you will be able to take these basic principles and generate a good image. You will learn about basic prompt structure as well as the differentiation between the two major prompting styles and when you would use one over the other. Without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Pookie. Hello everyone, I'm Pookie Numnums. I'm a Civitai community member and I've been honing my skills in AI image generation for the past three years and sharing custom models with the community over the last year. I started back in the days of Disco Diffusion when most people were simply using Dolly 1 or Dolly 2 and then eventually moved on to Stable Diffusion. This was before AI generation of images and video was so popular. So I've had quite a lot of time to uh, perfect my skills, I guess you could say. Today, I'm gonna explain my take on how I prompt so that you can get better results and so you can understand what is going on behind the scenes when using Stable Diffusion. Before we can understand what's happening when we prompt, first we need to understand what a prompt even is. The short answer is, it's what you tell the AI to show you. The not as short answer is, it's the points on a three-dimensional data map that the AI will use to play connect the dots. As we can see here, I have prompted for a man in a coffee shop. High quality, high resolution. Each part of the prompt is considered a token. So man is a token, coffee shop is gonna be a token, high quality, high resolution. These tokens are essentially patterns that you're calling forth. We can change the prompt to anything else we want. So let's try woman, a woman in a coffee shop. Okay. Let's have a little bit more fun. Let's try a dog in a coffee shop. Yeah, oh, that's a good boy. And if we wanted to go even further, let's just go straight off the rails. Let's do a demon in a coffee shop. So remember, the prompt is simply what you're telling the AI you want to see or what you're asking the AI to show you. So how does the model even know what our prompt is asking for? To start, let's clear up a misconception about how AI works to create images. The most common misunderstanding is that the AI is a program that has access to everyone's paintings and illustrations, etc., and that when you feed it a prompt, it's taking little bits and pieces of all of them and then compiles them together into a collage to make the resulting image. This is not the case. What actually happens is the AI starts out with noise or static and gradually removes noise to reveal the patterns that are represented by the words in the prompt. When AI models are trained on millions, if not billions of images, each image is accompanied by a text file with a caption or a description of what's actually in the image. These captions or descriptions are essentially the OG prompts that the AI will use to then understand the images we feed it. As the model is trained, the images along with their corresponding captions are analyzed many times and the AI begins to associate words in the captions with patterns in the images. Now do this for billions of images, and when the model is done being trained, it doesn't necessarily have all of those images stored inside, but instead it has become what is essentially a library of pattern recognition, so that when we prompt for something, the end result is an image that contains the patterns that meet the criteria of the prompt. So if I prompt for a dog wearing a slime suit, it's going to try and give me that. So now that we have a basic understanding of what a prompt is and how prompts are used as captions in both the training of models and the generation of images, how should we structure our prompts? There are two different styles that are used to caption images. First, we have blip 
in which images are captioned using natural language. The captions are written out as complete sentences, as though you're talking to a person. That's what we have on screen here, a photo of a woman with a flower in her hair. The other method, the second method of captioning, is the waifu diffusion style, in which images are captioned using only the tokens that describe the images separated by commas, such as this example, one girl, solo, looking at viewer, black hair, etc. Either will work, but the general rule of thumb is that anime models are typically trained using the waifu diffusion style of captioning, and the realism, 3D, and fantasy models are typically trained using the blip style of captioning. So what is the latent space, and how should I think about it? Latent space is kind of like the file cabinet and files that hold the data within the models. It's like a three-dimensional map of numbers that associate to specific patterns. That's a little bit too much The Matrix Part 2 for our needs. Having an easy way to visualize the concept for how data in the model is stored and used helps me with navigating the realm of AI image generation. And this is how I personally visualize it. Imagine a giant spider web that's made of wire, and at each intersection of the web is a thing that you can prompt for, such as cat, dog, human, whatever. The more closely related things are, the more web is between them. When you prompt, it's like flicking the web at those intersections and the vibrations are felt by everything else that's connected to it. This is why we get stuff we don't ask for in our prompts sometimes. The positive prompt and negative prompts are like selecting which parts of the web to flick and which parts to cut away. Now that we know what a prompt is, how the prompts relate to the latent space, and the difference between the two prompting styles of waifu diffusion and blip, let's talk about how we can construct our positive and negative prompts. There are three basic sections to the prompt. The things you want to see, what they look like or what they're doing, and then how you want to see them, or the quality. There is a limit to how many tokens the AI can understand and respond to accurately. So if you're just starting out, I recommend, recommend keeping it short and direct to the point. Make small changes or additions to your prompts and run those changes over a few images so that you can really tell how the changes are affecting the outcome. As you can see here, we have a cartoon girl with a cup of coffee. Very simple and easy, not much to it. We generate it and we get the girl with the cup of coffee. But how do we improve that? Or how do we change it? Let's say we don't want this green table or green background anymore. The negative prompt is gonna be instructions to the AI that tells it what you don't want it to do. So we'll do green background, green table. And let's put brown hair. The only thing that we've changed is the negative prompt. But let's improve it a little bit more. We're going to adjust the positive prompt and see if we can get something better out of it. An amazing illustration of a cartoon girl with a cup of coffee. By Akiman, the style of street. All right, so here we have a girl with a cup of coffee in the style of Street Fighter, but it doesn't quite look as much like Street Fighter as I would have hoped. One thing that you can do to tell the AI that it needs to pay more attention or lean in a specific direction more is by putting it in parentheses. If you put it in parentheses, the AI understands that there's an emphasis on that. So let's try. Okay, a little bit better, but not quite enough yet. If that's not working, you can actually turn up that emphasis. And what you can do is, while it's still inside the parentheses, at the end of the tokens in the parentheses, you'll add a colon and then a value, some value between one and two if you're trying to turn it up, and zero and one if you're trying to turn it down, if it's coming through too heavy. In this case, we wanna turn up the Street Fighter vibe. So we're gonna put 1.4.
much better. I would not want to try and take her coffee away from her. Now, when the AI reads your prompt and then gives you an image, it's going to start at the beginning of the prompt, just like we do when we type it out. And the things at the front are going to be the most important, while the things at the end are the least important. I always put my subject matter at the front, style modifiers in the middle, and then quality modifiers at the very end. Following that for the two to three years that I've been doing this has been pretty reliable, and you can trust that the elements in your prompt, especially if you keep it short and to the point, should show up or be representative in the image outcomes. Everything that we've discussed up to this point wouldn't do us any good without first selecting the right model for the job. If you want to make something illustrative, you can choose a flexible model like Rev Animated that has been trained on various illustrative styles. Or if you wanted to lean harder into anime, you could pick something like Counterfeit version 3.0, which is trained on high quality anime art. Or if you wanted to make something incredibly realistic, you could choose something like Realistic Vision, Cyber Realism, or Epic Photogasm. They've been trained on high quality, high resolution photography. That's not to say you shouldn't experiment with models and mix and match, as some of my favorite results were happy accidents and complete surprises. The great thing about the Civitai community is the wide range of models that are constantly being uploaded to the website. Now that we understand prompting and how to structure our prompts, here's a few other things to play with to help you get better images. Sampling method. All sampling methods will change your image results, so you'll want to experiment with them and see which ones work best for your taste or art style. Some popular ones are Euler, DDIM, and the DPM++ options. This image was generated using Euler A. Let's see what it looks like with DPM++ SDE. Makes quite the difference. Now let's move on to CFG. CFG is how hard the AI tries to stick to the prompt. A good CFG range to start with is somewhere between 7 and 10. The lower the CFG, the more flexibility. The higher the CFG, the more it tries to confine the image to the words in the prompt. Too low of a CFG though, and your images will come out washed out and blurry looking. Too high of a CFG, and they'll probably come out looking a little bit crispy or burned, as we say. Some uh, sampling methods do well with lower CFGs and some higher. You'll just have to test it. But a good, a good value is going to be between 7 and 10. And next up is sampling steps. Sampling steps is basically the amount of time that Stable Diffusion has to refine your image. Euler and DDIM both work well with sampling steps between 20 and 30. Higher steps allows for more time to refine the image, but it will also increase the amount of time it takes to render the image. And it can only be refined so much. You still may want to play with higher values though, because it can result in interesting variations. And lastly, the seed. Seed determines the AI image's starting point. Having the seed at random means you'll generate a new image every time you click generate. It is recommended to use a random seed while you're still figuring out what you want your image to look like. And then once you have something you do like, switch to a fixed seed and then refine it by changing your prompt, your sampling steps, and your CFG. To generate images using a random seed, click on the dice icon. To generate images using a fixed seed, click on the recycle icon. Once you have your settings just right and the image is good, you can swap back to random to generate more images in that style and quality. Hey guys, we really hope this has helped you understand prompting better and has given you the confidence to go forward and explore and find your own art style. My name's Pookie Num Nums. Come check out my Civitai page for my custom models and lures. You can find me on Instagram under the same name where I'm pushing the limits of AI Image Jam using only eight gigabytes of VRAM. We really hope that these basic principles have helped strengthen your foundation so that you have a solid base to build upon and continue improving your prompting. Please check out our YouTube channel for more specialty tutorials, as well as stay tuned for more beginner tutorials coming down the pipeline. My name is Tyler. Thank you for joining us on Civitai.com.